Welcome back to Tipsy Tailgate Media and Speaking Socks. We're talking baseball, which is our favorite, honestly. Um, and, you know, we're excited to be back. I'm Aiden. I'm Ben. And uh, I know it's been a while, but we are back. And uh, we've got a good one for you in store. We're talking, you know, all-star break, baseball. There's Shohei Otani news. There's trade deadline news. Teams for the second half, who's going to get going, who's not. Whatever it is, we're talking it, and uh, and we're excited to bring it to you. And we're going to start off with Shohei Otani, you know, maybe the greatest player in baseball history, the only guy able to hit the baseball at an MVP level and then pitch at an MVP level. You know, Babe yep. Ruth did both, but he never did both at the highest level. He was able to hit at the highest level, and then when he pitched, he was able to pitch at a high level, but he never did both at the high level together. And that's what separates Otani. Plus, Otani's doing it at a time where, you know, these athletes are two to three times the size of um, Babe Ruth's competition. So, you know, I, I think it's yeah. everyone understands the greatness that we're experiencing in Shohei Otani. And, uh, and I do want to start it off with the Angels are a team that, they had two of maybe the greatest players we've seen in a while, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, and they both are, you know, finding their careers at kind of a standstill in terms of Trout, he's been to the playoffs once. I believe it was it was his rookie year, and no success. Never won a playoff game. Shohei Otani never been to the playoffs. And it looks like it doesn't it looks like it's not gonna happen for him this year as long as it's on the Angels, at least. And so a big discussion here is half of the season is remaining. You know, we got the trade deadline coming up. The deadline's August 1st. And he's going to be on the move because he's going to be a free agent after this year. And the Angels are going to want to get some value for the greatest baseball player, talent-wise, you know, we've ever seen. So yeah. if they want to get any value for him, this is the time they have to trade him. If not, they're not going to re-sign him most likely, and he's probably going to end up walking in free agency. To to not get anything for a player of this talent level is, you know, that would be a really bad look on the franchise and the ownership. So I think the Angels have to trade him, and I think it's going to come sooner than later. I don't think they're going to wait until the end of the deadline to do it. So, Ben, what do you think? Where do you think Shohei Otani is going to go? Yeah, um, I think he's definitely going to get moved. But there is a little piece of me that's like, are the Angels ownership going to get really stubborn about this and not want to take the embarrassment of never being able to build a competitive team around Trout and Otani and just not deal him, which to me would be even more embarrassing, not getting anything for, as you just said, perhaps a guy who's going to become the greatest baseball player of all time and really could be on his way to building that kind of legacy legacy for himself right now. So I think he definitely. definitely will get moved, but there is a little bit of peace in me that's scared that he won't. But the team that I think he's going to go to, and I think it pains you and I to hear this said out loud, I think it's the Yankees. And oh. um, <laughs> I, think a, I think a major piece of this is that the Yankees want to compete right now, obviously, and want to get that next World Series title. It's been – it's been – over a decade since they were able to do so. And they're just kind of hovering in mediocrity. I know a lot of people in Yankees fandom, Yankees nation don't want to hear that, but they're mediocre and they have been for the better part of a decade, even more. So I think that they make this move to try to return to the level that they were once at. And I think he's going to be wearing the pinstripes. It's going to be disgusting to see. Um, and they need to do something to, substitute what they're missing with judge's injury even if it's obviously you're making this move for the future if you're the Yankees trying to get Otani but you're obviously doing it right now to substitute what you're missing from judge's injury who's clearly I mean they're not bad like they're not a bad team without him but they're they're not nearly what they would be if he was there right now so I think that they're going to do whatever it takes to add Otani into that lineup right now yeah I think that's a great take um Honestly, I think the sweep sweepstakes for Otani are between two teams, if I have to be honest. And uh, one of them is the Yankees, like you just said. I think that's a great point in terms of, you know, their pitching is already phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Their hitting has been atrocious without Judge this year. 
you know, record Horrible. record bad. But the uh, team itself the isn't fired. bad. The hitting's bad. No. But they're in they're well in the race to make the postseason. So yeah, the, the pitching is the pitching is so good. Them. I mean both and they haven't everything. even had Radon back. They haven't even had yeah, so he, he just like made his start. Team. Exactly. He just made his first start with the team yeah. uh, this past Friday, I believe. So, you know, if you think about it, if they do get a guy like Otani now, they have two judge-level hitters in that lineup. They've got two co-level pitchers in that rotation. You know, that's very dangerous. And for any team to deal with, that's that's extremely – in like, the AL East is – Maybe the toughest division in, in sports in the past, you know, however long. You know, the Red Sox are, what, five games above 500, and they are in last place. So if you think about it, this finally puts the Yankees um, a little bit more on top of the teams that, you know, the competition's insane in that division. So yeah. I, I like that pick, and uh, and I, I could definitely see it happening. I did say they're one of two teams that I could see them going to, and that is because the other team is... I'm not repping the Dodgers for no reason. That's the reason why I'm wearing them. Uh, I, I think the Dodgers is probably the most realistic, in my opinion. Um, they had a, a confusingly quiet offseason this past offseason. Yes. You know, Syndergaard, whatever else, David Peralta, J.D. Martinez, nothing huge, right? And I think that's because they knew that they were going to, whether it was Soto uh, next year or Otani this year, they knew they were going to go and have to do a huge um, contract. And, and I think that's why I, I think they're one of the smartest organizations in sports. Um, you know, you just look at their top 100, I'm sorry, their, their top prospect rankings. And I think they have like 10 or maybe more in, in the top a hundred for all of baseball. So they could draft well, they could develop well, they know how to trade for guys and then grow them. They're a smart organization. So there's a reason why they weren't spending money last off season. He's going to the Dodgers. Um, I think what they could do is they could trade, um, a guy like Bobby Miller, their starting pitcher, uh, former number one prospect now in the majors, uh, Diego Cartaya, their number one prospect now, uh, catcher, He's supposed to be really good, and he's supposed to be up next year. Uh, Michael Bush, you know, is another guy that could be moved. Um, you got a lot of pieces. Gavin Stone, no. Andy Pages. Uh, I think it's Pajes, actually. Um, Ryan Ripio, Emmett Sheehan, who's been up. You know, a lot of these guys have been up because of so many injuries to their bullpen, or sorry, to their starting rotation. And that just opens up even more opportunity. You know, you could trade some of those young guys who have looked good so far on that starting rotation, but might not be the answer for a guy like Shohei Otani, who is the answer for your pitching problems and for some hitting uh, uh, issues that you might you might have, which seems like this team with Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman and, and all those guys are doing just fine. But I think mm-hmm. that the Dodgers can really make this move for a couple of reasons, and one of them being the capital they can move and not take too big of a hit on their um, on their farm system, and the other being that when they do get Otani, I think that they could re-sign him, and it won't just be a, a rental. I think that they'll be able to give him the right whatever it is five hundred, six hundred million dollar contract for over ten years, twelve years, whatever it is. I think that the Dodgers are one of those few teams that can make that offer, and I think they will. For a lot of teams, if they get them, it might be a rental because they might not be able to afford that contract. And to get Otani for two, two and a half months, whatever it is, if you make the playoffs, you you don't make the playoffs, whatever it is, it's not worth it to give up your top prospects um, in terms of of getting Otani for a rental. So unless you know you could bring him back for years to come, 10, 12 years, whatever it is, then I don't think it's worth it, you know, unless you really think you have a shot of go getting getting them for, you know, a little bit less than the top of the top price, ta- price tag just because of how long you're going to have them for. And then the other reason would be, you know, unless you think you could win a World Series with them. So I think the Dodgers can get Otani. I think that's a real possibility. I think you're right yeah. with saying the Yankees. I think it's between those two. Um, yeah, similar to what you just said about teams – like you, you kind of said it already. I only see teams that are able to keep him in the long term 
going to trade for him, whether that, you know, obviously yeah. the Yankees and the Dodgers teams that we already listed. And then another team that would typically be in this conversation, but they're kind of veering away from this in the last couple of years is the Red Sox, our team, the Red Sox, who historically have um, paid players at a high rate and have tried to make trades and then keep guys long-term. That's something that we've been used to seeing. But then you're seeing recently Kyle Schwarber, you trade for him the deadline. You're like, oh, we'll probably extend him when the season's up. But under Heim Bloom, they're starting to go in a different direction. But that's another discussion in itself, whether or not Heim Bloom should be the GM. But I think you're right in saying that a major reason as to why the Dodgers should do this is not only can you win the World Series right now, but you're going to extend him because you're one of the few teams that can extend him and not take a major hit on your payroll and on your roster as a whole. And another thing I wanted to add about the Dodgers, outside of his health, there's a reason that you've only been giving Clayton Kershaw one-year deals the last three off seasons. You're looking to replace him. And it's obviously not for the way that he's been playing, uh, but I, I think outside of his health, he's going to – he's getting older, older. He's getting up there in age. And Shohei Tani would be a perfect – way to segue away from the legend that you've had for his whole career and not upset the fans. I think that's also outside of being a great baseball move. Yeah. It's a great PR move for the Dodgers. Dodgers. Definitely. Um, and then you add to, you know, Mookie Betts, one of the biggest names in baseball, Freddie Freeman, probably one of the biggest names in baseball, Clayton Kershaw, one of the biggest names in baseball for sure. Mm -hmm. And then you bring the biggest name in baseball, right? They, you know, just the money that they're going to make on sales through the 10 years that Otani plays there or however long he plays there, you know, it's so worthwhile for their investment, you know, barring, you know, a big injury where it alters that. I think that this move is, you know, I think it's the most likely move. I think to the Yankees is a little bit different because the, the Yankee fans are so hostile. I think mm -hmm. that if they do get them and, you know, say, he hasn't pitched fantastically in his career um, at Yankee Stadium. So maybe, what, one start, two starts, he starts getting hit. You know, the Yankee fans are going to like this. The Joe Gallo treatment, you know, it's a lot to handle. Yeah. He doesn't even speak the language, but he can hear the boos. So it, uh, I think it would be a lot, and I think that the Dodgers is a more realistic And another thing, I know I'm kind of tearing down my own argument in saying this, but I think – one of the major reasons that he chose the angels uh, when he came over from Japan was that, isn't it easier for his family to watch him from Japan when he's in California? Doesn't the, don't the time zones yes. line up better? So I believe so. Yeah. That's another reason that maybe he, even if he gets traded to a different team, he likes to sign with LA in the off seasons because it's easier for his family to watch him. Yeah. And what if it was, the Angels over the Dodgers originally because he felt that the Angels wouldn't have all the spotlight on him and he'll be able to yeah. grow in that environment. And then now he's handled the biggest stage. Right. Now he's ready to go to that bigger market. So I think we've we both made really good points. And I, I think, you know, it's definitely possible. I actually think it's going to happen sooner than later. You know, not closer to that August 1st deadline, closer to now. But, you know, we'll see. It's a big deal for any team to make. So uh, there's definitely a lot of negotiation that has to go into that. I, I still um, I still think that, like, the Red Sox are a good team for him to go to. We've cited it many times how they have a vast amount of success with Japanese players, whether it be yeah. uh, Yoshi right now. Um, Dice K. Dice K is another great one. Koji. I just, yeah, I, I just think that – it just makes sense for him to be with the Red Sox, but they're refusing to spend money. And I do think that we have some good young players that we could package a guy like Tristan Casas. I know he's not performing as well as we want him to right now, but it is his first year in the bigs and he has a lot of room to grow. And that's something that owners look at. So I think that if you form a package around Casas, who knows, it could be a move that you could make. And then you can move Turner to first. I don't want to make this about the Red Sox, but I have thought about this <laughs> a lot in my head about, how a trade for Otani yeah. along with I'm sure other, all the other fan bases, what you could do with Otani on your roster. So I'm, I'm not ruling out the Red Sox. And I don't think anyone should, cause who knows what's going to happen, but 
let's move on to, I want to talk about five players we think are on the move, getting traded this trade deadline, and who they are, and where are they going. Um, I could actually take the start on this one if you want. I'm going to go ahead and say former Red Sox, Eduardo Rodriguez, now the Tigers. I believe he's sporting a two-something ERA. He's been phenomenal this year. I he's think he was... Yeah, I think he was a lock to, um, let me just double check that actually, but yeah, so, wow, okay, he had a 2-1-3 two, th- two, ERA through 11 starts before he got hurt and landed on the I- IL, nothing crazy, so he'll be back, but, you know, that's that's some serious um, stats right there, and uh, he's yeah. on the Tigers right now, Tigers have nothing to play for, might as well grab some prospects, I could see him not to be everything about the Dodgers is the last time I'll mention them, but I could see him going to the Dodgers. Like I said, they have a lot of pitching that is injured. A lot of their pitching is young because of that. Um, a lot of rookies and a lot of guys that are stepping up. I think you, I think they'd be foolish to go into um, a playoff run and a playoff stretch with knowing that they have what two to three guys in their starting rotation that are young rookies. So, I think you got to get a guy who's experienced a little bit. Eduardo's been in the playoffs with the Sox, mm-hmm. um, and he's pitching great here. this year. Exactly. So I think that that's a good move for them, and I could see that happening. Uh, grab another lefty arm as well. So uh, that's that's going to be my first one. Yeah, I like that. Um, obviously, the Dodgers saw that firsthand, how well he can pitch in the postseason. Um, yeah. I believe it was game four that he pitched against them. He eventually let up that home he run. let up. But he still played was great it, in that game. Was it the Puig believe. home run? Yeah, when he, yeah, when he yeah. threw his glove yeah. on the mound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah, but, oh. yeah, I, I think that's a good pick. And I think Eduardo was another one of those guys from the Sox that you had to keep him because he was great with the team, but he was just so young and he was going to keep getting better. And I think that he has potential to be even the best guy in a rotation, but let alone you put him on L.A.'s rotation, and he's, what, the third? the third guy walking into the building. So yeah, I think that's a great choice. Mine's going to be, I'm going to go with Brent Rooker from the Oakland A's. I I think that they should sell the team as a whole, let alone (laughs) uh, one guy, but I think they'll sell the team to the, at the deadline. (laughs) Yeah, they should. Um, (laughs) But I'm going to go with Brent Rooker going to the Arizona Diamondbacks. I think that they need another powerful bat in that lineup. Um, I think that they're going to make the postseason. I think that they have been building to this. You and I have been all over them for the last couple of years, yep. saying that yep. they're building to something that's that I that's think right. could be special down the line. But I think Brent Rooker, he's a guy that he can play in the outfield any day. He can play DH if you need him to take a day off um, from fielding. So I think that he's going to be a big move uh, for any team that's in contention for the postseason. But I'm just I'm going to go with the Diamondbacks because I think that they need to make a bit of a splash heading into this postseason run. That's a good call. Um, I like that a lot. We both, you know, we just touched on how much we both have been liking the Diamondbacks uh, this season in particular. And, um, you know, it just shows you they're right up there. I believe they are tied for first right now with the Dodgers. Um, It might be. Yes. Oh, no. So they're they're tied. They've played. They have one one more win, one more loss. Yep. Yep. Equals out the same thing. But. You know, what a showing for them. I mean, yeah. like, let's be real here. That's phenomenal out of, also, out of a team that, you know, nobody really expected, obviously. They can't stay stagnant. They can't be satisfied with where they're at. Agreed. They need to, to make a move or two or two moves um, in order to keep improving because that division's no joke. I mean, yeah. obviously, you yeah. have the Dodgers. The D-backs are very good right now. You have the Giants who are having one of the top surprise seasons uh, so far, I don't think many people were expecting much out of them this year. And then the Padres, we're going to talk about them a bit, about at least I'm going to talk about them a bit, how they should start selling off some pieces. I actually have two guys from their team on in my top five for guys who could be moved. Um, but the okay. Padres, at any point, they could turn it on and just make us all look stupid. So I think the yeah. D-backs have to make some moves and stay aggressive. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, to go on to my second one, I'm actually going to do Marcus Stroman of the Cubs. He's been pitching great this year. Um, not doing his best work recently. Started off the year even hotter, but um, still pitching really good for the Cubs. I could see him going to the Orioles. 
Um, I like that. I like that. You look at a team that's been, you know, really impressive this year in the toughest division in baseball. They're two games back of the Rays. You know, the Rays were the team that was running away with it beginning only two games back now. And I think it's a perfect position because you look at some of the guys who started the most games for the Orioles. You've got Kyle Gibson, 4-6 ERA, and he's up there in age. Dean Kramer, 4-7-8 ERA. Not your best option, you know, for 18 starts already. Uh, Tyler Wells has been much better, 3-1-8. Kyle Bradish, 3-3-2. And then Grayson Rodriguez, obviously. You got Cole Irving, Keegan Aiken. You got some guys like that who can make starts for you, not necessarily starters. But I think if you go ahead and you add a not too expensive arm in a guy like Marcus Stroman, who's been pitching great this year, I think that's really valuable for a team that's, you know, not only young and can use the mentorship, but also a team that, that is flashy. Like, this is a team that's been flashy um, since getting guys like Adley Rutschman up there, you know. Um, you, you start having the rookies playing, and, and they're calling up all this young talent. They're going to be flashy. It's a new era of baseball. Uh, Marcus Stroman's got a 2.96 ERA right now, just under 100 strikeouts. So I think that's a, a, a team that could really uh, use Stroman's veteran leadership as well as flashiness, and then just straight up him to just – pitch innings for him, you know. I think yeah. it's not going to cost them too much as well. They have the value that they could um, go ahead and, and trade uh, for him easily. I don't know what it would take. I don't think it would take – it wouldn't take a Jackson Holiday. I don't think it would take a Colton Kowser. I don't think it will take a Jordan Westberg. It might take a Heston Kurg- uh, Kurgistad, their outfielder. Supposed to be up next year, and he's a really talented hitter. Might take him – He's their fourth prospect at the moment, but you have to consider how many guys just got called up. Um, if not, you might be looking at a guy like Kobe Mayo, you know, um, DJ DL Hall, their pitcher, left-handed pitcher, Dylan Beavers, whatever it is. They've got so many pieces that they could move for a guy like Stroman without hurting any of their farm system, any of their progress, and uh, and their youth. So I think Stroman's a guy to watch, and I think that would really help this Orioles team. I agree. And I I think that if they need, if the Orioles need anything else right now, it's just more stability in the starting rotation. I think that they've performed admirably to this point. Obviously they're what second in the AL East. Um, So yeah, I, I think that the Orioles are similar to the Diamondbacks, a team that has been expected to pop a little bit the last couple of years. Um, A little bit of a dumpster fire, both them and the D backs, a few years ago looked like that they didn't really have much to work with, but they've proved that wrong the last couple of years. So I think a big splash like Stroman would be huge for this team. Definitely would definitely make them a threat in the postseason. So for mine, my second, I'm going to go with another starting pitcher. I'm going to go with Lucas Giolito going to the Houston Astros. And I think the Astros are in a position to have a bit of resurgence in the second half of the year. They haven't been bad by any means. Um, But for their standards, I know that their team, their fans, and definitely their front office are not happy with where they are right now. And I think that they need another starting pitcher to help kick things up a gear. So I'm going to go with Giolito going to the Astros. Um, Obviously, they might have the best culture in baseball right now, given how much success that they've had in recent years. Uh, They have some of the best high-end talent for any roster. I know I'm just stating the obvious here, but I think it has to be stated in this situation. Um, (laughs) but yeah, I think Giolito would be, um, very valuable to them. Um, kind of like what you were saying with Stroman, they just need another guy that can give them a lot of innings and at a high level. So I think that Giolito is definitely on the move. Um, I think the White Sox are just, I think they suck. I hate the White Sox. I hate their culture. I've been saying that for years. I think they have one of the worst cultures. It's a joke. Um, and I think Giolito would find a lot of success in Houston. I like that one a lot. Actually, I like that. And I had a similar move for the Astros. Different guy, though. So I'm actually going to double up with two guys, and then you can come back with two guys yourself. Um, I'm going, instead of Lucas Giolito, to the Astros. I think the Astros are going to get Jack Flaherty from the Cardinals. Um, A guy who, you know, can throw hard. Um, He's a gamer. Hasn't really been going well for him this past year, and I don't believe he did that phenomenally last season either, but you know he has the talent, you know he's done it before, and uh, 
And he's a guy that with a little bit of, he's a guy with a little bit of help from, you know, the development. Just think about the development from this Astros team. Uh, I think, you know, he could, he could thrive in this system and uh, you could always use another pitcher at the deadline. And uh, we've learned from teams like the Dodgers and, and the Yankees and the Astros that have done this year after year. You could always use extra help. Again, though, I do want to go to the White Sox and the Astros because I'm going to go ahead and say instead of Giolito as their pitcher, I'm going Flaherty. But instead of, um, but to replace that White Sox presence, I'm going to go Eloy Jimenez um, okay. going, getting shipped over to the Astros just because, one, in- injury problems, he's, you know, barely on the field. Two, because of those injury problems, I actually don't think he's going to cost too much. And a guy that, you know, won't cost that much, but can hit you 30, 35 home runs in a season just seems perfectly Astros, you know, just knowing mm-hmm. them, they'd get him for, you know, less than, than anyone would expect. He'd go out there, he'd be healthy for three straight seasons and he'd hit 30 home runs a season. So I could see that coming in as, you know, at worst a DH power bat. I know he's not the best fielder. Um, what are you going to throw him or Jordan at, at left field, but whatever it is, you know, to DH a game here and there, maybe the lefty matchup off the bench, it's not going to cost you that much. I think it's, it's like a, it's like a Kyle Schwarber one step down, but with that one step down, yeah. you don't have to pay as much. So I think that it's a right. good move for the Astros, maybe similar to like that Trey Mancini move they made last year, but with more upside. I like both of those. I like both of those a lot. Um, yeah, I, I think that – I don't know. I, I think Houston's going to – Houston's going to fuck up the season and just get hot again, and I'm not looking forward to it. I'm really Is that not. how you feel? <laughs> I just don't – I don't want them to win. I don't want them to win at all. I, I, I think, think anyone does. I think the league needs a new team to step up and go on a deep run because we've kind of been – like, obviously – I'm all for teams building dynasties and being great and just running the league. We saw it. We used to see it with the Cardinals and with the Sox for a while. And obviously the Yankees in the early 2000s and the Giants were great for a long time. And that's great for the league. Like, that's phenomenal for the league. But I want a team to win their first World Series since the late 2000s. They were there last year. I'm low-key a big fan of the squad, even though I love the Red Sox. I want the Phillies to go out and get Juan Soto. And I want them to continue this push that they've had of building a star studded team. You have Harper, you have Turner, you have Schwarber, you have Nolan, that great pitching staff. If you bring in Soto, they could come out of the NL and win the world series this year. So I think that they're going to go poach him from San Diego Padres and go back to the world series. And this time get it done. Cause I think one issue that they, that they had a bit last year, you didn't have Harper playing in the outfield in the postseason because of his elbow. And and you have the same problem this year. So I think that adding Soto not only fixes the, the fielding issues that they may have, which they persevered through last year. Obviously they were one of the worst defensive defensive teams in the big, and they still made it to the world series. But if you add in Soto, I think you're, you're killing uh, two birds with one stone on that one. Yeah. I like that. And you know what that actually opens up for them is, Instead of doing uh, Harper at DH, I think what you can do is you could put Harper at first to mm-hmm. replace Derek Hall. Obviously, Reese Hoskins is hurt this year. Right. And then you have some flexibility, you know, whether that's Soto and Wright, Castellanos at DH, whether it's Schwarber at DH, which I think he would be best fit at. Yes. Um, you know, he's not he's not the best fielder. Um, you know, no, I would say Kyle Schwarber is like a that. brutal fielder. Like, Kyle Schwarber sucks yeah. at defense. He sucks at it. I remember him at first with the Sox was hilarious because he'd, he'd, he'd finally like feel the ground ball correctly and the crowd would go nuts. So yeah, um, I'm missing him right now as a Sox guy, but I'll give him his credit. Uh, for how that. many, how many more guys do you have on your list? Is, is that the last one you got? One more. I, have, I have one more trade, but then I have a free agency move that I want to address. To me. Yeah. So the final trade that I have, I want the Sox to go out and get Josh Hader. And I, I said I was going to have two guys from the pods on this list, but I think the Sox need to do everything that they can to buy in and go for a playoff run. 
an add Josh Hader, an elite arm out of the bullpen. Okay. The bullpen has I been like has turned from a weakness to a strength for the Sox. You now have Martin, who's elite out of the bullpen right now, and you have Jansen, who I think has been the best closer in baseball. I know people will disagree with me, and they'll say I'm extremely biased, but he's been phenomenal. He's been everything that the Red Sox could ask, the Red Sox could ask for and more. The one issue that I have with them right now, you even have Schreiber, who's playing very well as well, um, but he's been yeah. hurt a little bit. Um, they don't have a nasty lefty arm out of the bullpen, which we've seen yeah. in recent years is so important, especially if you're in the playoffs, to start matching up more, now more than ever to start matching up lefty, lefty, righty, righty. And I think that's what they're missing right now. So I think adding a guy like Josh Hader would be perfect for what the Red Sox need right now need right now i agree i think doubling down on a bullpen is always a good move a strong bullpen is just primed to do great things in in the postseason so you know if the Sox can get there that would be a great move to help them out there um i'm gonna go with one of mine do you do you want to go i was gonna add something else another thing about the red Sox needing to add to their bullpen right now is i to me the starting rotation is what it is they're not going to change it at all. They're just going to deal with it and go down the line with what they have. They're going to rely on sale eventually being back and eventually figuring out how to be healthy, even though I don't think that's the best way to go about it. I think that's the reality of the situation. So to me, the only way to yeah. combat that is by fortifying your bullpen even more. I like that. Um, definitely think that would be a great move for the Sox. Now, I think I'm going to go with, I'm just going to put these two out there. You know, I don't know logistically how well this works, but I think Cody Bellinger to the Yankees, um, you know, you got a lot of issues in terms of can hit for, for average as a team, you know, whether that's fielding besides, you know, Harrison Bader and Judge, obviously when Judge is back, but right now Harrison Bader is probably the only guy you have that could really field in the outfield. Um, Bellinger is mm-hmm. a plus fielder, plus arm. I don't know where you put him. Maybe you put him in left and uh, and you move something around like that. You know, Judge comes back. Say Judge plays right. Hey, uh, Bader in center. Say you put Bellinger in left. That's a really good, not only defensive, um, but he can hit for pop. As we've seen, he had a home run at Yankee Stadium just in their last series. And uh, actually this year, he's hitting for a good amount of, a- of uh, contact. He's got a solid average. Yeah. So. Another guy like that, it's a one-year buy, a little rental. I think the Yankees could definitely dabble in that, and uh, and I think that would be a solid move for them. And then from the other um, spectrum, I'm going to go with a relief pitcher to the Rangers. I'm going Cardinals to Rangers. Jordan Hicks of the Cardinals. I think the Rangers could use another bullpen arm. I believe they got Chapman uh, maybe like a month ago from the Royals. And I think they need to double down, maybe get that right-handed arm. Jordan Hicks throws absolute gas. I think he touches 102, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, The Rangers have a really strong future ahead of them. And I think that they could really cash in this year with, you know, doubling down on that bullpen. Sadly, DeGrom's injured. So, you know, that's another just like, you know, it's just a tragedy, honestly, that that they're playing so good. Obviously, I, I, I am upset that DeGrom's hurt, but there is a little piece of me like, like what would we expect here? Like, yeah. Did, did no, it's the truth. That he, like, you gave him a lot of money, and I understand why they did it. And the Rangers have actually proved me wrong a lot this season. I, I, I don't know if you remember this, but when we were doing our preseason picks, I said, uh, to me, the Rangers made a lot of moves not to win baseball games, but to put fans in the seats. And yeah. I could not have been more wrong. They're, they're a great team. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you have to give a lot of credit to Evaldi as well. I think Evaldi is yeah. playing yeah. the best that he's played in years. And Yeah, Evaldi's he phenomenal. He had some years on the Sox where he was great, and he got overshadowed a bit by what Chris Sale was doing. Um, and, and David Price that year. And um, even a guy like uh, – like Erod was great that year. You had Sale, yeah. Erod, um, David Price, and then Evaldi. I don't think we understood yeah. at the time what we had with that starting rotation, but I yeah. think Evaldi's finally yeah. getting the success that he should have in those years. 
Yeah, Valdi's putting together like such a sneaky great career. Yeah, I mean, just the amount of wins he must have at this point. What a guy! Um, I love him as a for, as a Sox guy, um, and everything he did for us there. So, you know, phenomenal career from Evaldi, and, and I completely agree with what you're saying. The Rangers they should double down. Um, I believe you said you had one more. Uh, I had one more free agency, free agency move. Uh, I'm not going to take any credit for this because I saw it on Twitter right before we hopped on this, but I just had to talk about it because I just love it so much. Even though it's in our division against one of our rivals, who I don't want to see succeed, Nelson Cruz to the Blue Jays. To me, that's that's really enticing. Obviously, Nelson isn't yeah. what he used to be. He's 43 years old. like, um, But he can still hit a big, get a big hit in a big spot, which I think is something that the Blue Jays def- desperately need. It's something that we saw last year out of them. I think a lot of these young guys aren't quite ready to take that jump that they need to make to be a legitimate uh, World Series team. Obviously, Manoa right now has a major piece to do with that, given how much he has struggled. Um, if Manoa was if Manoa was what he was supposed to be before the year, they could be leading this division if he could replicate his record from the past few seasons. And I know that's a lot yeah. to put on one guy, but you're the ace of the team. You get Cy Young votes. That's what you're supposed to be. That's what they expect you to be. But regardless, yeah. adding a guy like Nelson Cruz, adding more pop to a lineup, that is one of the best in the league. I think that would be for a sure. phenomenal move for the Blue Jays. Yeah, and that would give it the feel of like uh, Edwin Encarnacion or like yes. a Jose Batista of yes. the past. Yep. I like that a lot. Um, all right, let's go into our last segment, teams to watch out for in the second half. Uh, I'll take charge here. So I'm going to go ahead and say the Seattle Mariners, the team that hosted the All-Star game. And that is because – <laughs> Well, that's because I think that I really think that they so far, it's no no secret that they've underwhelmed the season coming off of a really good la- end of the stretch of last season. Right now, they're 45 and 44, six games out of first place in the AL West, but they're definitely not out of it. I think that this is a team that could make a run just like they did last year in the second half and be dangerous. And I think a lot of that goes into their lineup can't really hit. So what if they made a move? I should have put this in my in my trade maybe, but you know, what if they went and they went out and they made a move for a guy like Paul Goldschmidt, you know? That's something that you have to look at and be like, okay. Yeah. Like I mean, it's really just been their hitting that's been struggle so far. I mean, Ty France is usually uh and in the 300s of an average, he's hitting 261 this year. Julio Rodriguez is underwhelming, even though he's, you know, made a great all-star um, game appearance. 249, 13 home runs, 49 RBIs. Teoscar Hernandez has been um, the stat leader for in terms of home runs and right up there for RBIs. I mean, you have Eugenio Suarez um, that's putting up uh, 11 home runs, 52 RBIs. Kalenix there. I mean, Mike Ford. There's no guy that's really standing out, at least in terms of average, and you're going to get a guy like Paul Goldschmidt if you do do that, where now you're really talking. I think that would be a huge move for them, and I think the main reason why I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say the Mariners for the second half is because when you have this type of three-headed monster and rotation, Luis Castillo, 285 ERA, George Kirby, all-star, 309 ERA, and then Logan Gilbert, 366 ERA, and they're all young. That's scary. I mean, their bullpen's also good. Andres Munoz is back. Um, You've got guys like Paul Sewald, um, even more in the bullpen, bullpen like like Bryce Miller. You got Matt Brash in the the pen. You know, they are such a well-built team that I'd be surprised if they can't put something together at least to to take that – next step in the second half. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad pick at all. Um, and I know I give you crap about loving the Mariners. I just like to give you <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> but they're they're a great team. And they're the emphasis I want to put on it is they're not just a great team. They're a great young team. So I, I think that, like, listen, the dog days of summer are coming up. Um, maybe while some teams are getting tired, stamina's getting a little low, maybe, maybe this is where it's similar to last year. Seattle takes that jump, as you just said, goes on a bit of a surge and takes over in their division for a little bit, which 
I mean, listen, at this point in the season, when you're not out of it, all you need is a two week run where you win eight out of 11, uh, nine out of 12, something like that. And then you're firmly back in the wild card race. But the team I'm going to go with is a team that may have been the hottest in the league going into the all star break. I don't want to hear that they had weak competition going into the all star break because they took a uh, two out, they took two out of three games against the Rangers, who are one of the best teams in the AL right before they played the lowly A's, and that's the Boston Red Sox. I think that they are primed for a run to make it to the uh, – I'll, I'll give them the last wild card spot, but they're last in their division right now. And it's insane that a team that's 48 and 43 and has hit the ball as well as they have, uh, has largely pitched far better than I thought people – um, that I'm, I included thought that they would going into the year. Obviously, Bayo is a huge part of that. He is turning into the ace of this team. I think Bayo's legit. Oh, yeah. I think he's going to be great for years. He's been to phenomenal. Come. Um, but I'm going to take the Red Sox as my team. Turner's playing great. Turner's been everything that they could have hoped for. Yoshi is easily AL Rookie of the Year. I don't think it's even a debate. I think that he has been one of the most valuable players in the AL. I don't, obviously, I'm not saying he should win MVP, but. He's been great for the Red Sox so far. Raphael Devers, the fact that he was left out of the All-Star game is a joke. It's pathetic. Anyone who voted for that and didn't include Raffy Devers, you should never be allowed to speak of baseball again. What is he, fourth in home runs and second in RBIs in the American League, and he was left off the All-Star team? Like, fuck off. That's a joke. Um, I So I'm going to go with the Red Sox. I think that they need to make a move. Obviously, I said Hater. I think Hater might be that move that they need to make. You have Trevor Story coming in. I know it's unfair to put a lot of expectations on him given the major surgery that he had, but I think the Red Sox are going to be just fine. And I think they're going to make the playoffs. Uh, And a major piece of this is the way that they've played against a least opponents outside of the Rays. They've been kind of bullying their rivals in the AL East. So the Yankees should be thinking they're lucky stars that we don't play them for the rest of the year. At least I don't think we play them for the rest of the year. I could be wrong on that, but what we go five out of six against them. And then the blue Jays, we swept in Toronto. They have to come back to Fenway uh, in early August. I believe it is. So I, I think that we easily grab two out of three against them. I wouldn't want to play the Red Sox right now. I really wouldn't. I think that they have enough pieces to put it all together. Like this really isn't bias. You, you put up, you have Rafi, you have Yoshi, you have Verdugo, you have Duvall playing the way that he's been playing recently. That's one of the best parts of a lineup in the entire league, not just the American League. So if their pitching can keep it up and keep playing as well as they have, there's no there's no putting a ceiling on this team. They could easily get hot and make a run here, especially well, really relying on Story coming back, even more so than Sale being healthy. They need Story to come back and be everything that we signed him to be. You know, I don't want to be biased either, but that's a really good point, and I'm going to stick by it with you. I mean, everything you just said is is it's the truth. I mean, you know, from their top of their order and the top of their, you know, the staff, I'd like to say, you know, with Bayo, and then mm-hmm. the bottom up, you know, there's a lot of guys that haven't been maybe in the past seen as a contributor like Jaron Duran, and then all of a sudden, I can't believe three thirty. So I mean, brought him up. I forgot to bring up Jaron Duran, who has been he's been so one of the good. best surprises across the entire league. How well he has played! He's one of the best yeah. baseballs in the league right now. He's playing like one of the best center fielders defensively right now. Yeah, he's hitting over three hundred, and he's hitting for a little bit of pop. I this team's. I wouldn't want to play them if if you catch them in a playoff series. I would not. I would want no part of them especially if Chris Sale is able to stay healthy. Because when he was healthy this year, he looked like Chris Sale, and he was phenomenal. Listen, I'm right there with you on that. I uh, He's been so good. Bayo's been unreal. I, I love where the Sox are, at least for the future, if not for this season. Um, but there's definitely some potential in, in making a really good run this season, especially with Trevor Story coming back. And um, all right, I do want to end it on one thing. I want to hear your mid-season World Series pick. I want you to I want you to give it to me. I know just dropped it on you, so I'll go first. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say Braves 
Rangers, Braves win the World Series. That's my pick right there. And then uh, I think I think a lot of that is just Acuna being back. I remember when they won the World Series, everyone was like, yeah, 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 like blah, blah, blah. And then the next season came, and nobody was really expecting them to do anything great. And I was like, how? Like, they just won the World Series. I get it. They mm-hmm. lost Freddie Freeman. They brought back – they brought in Matt Olsen. But they just – they won the World Series without their best player. Ronald Acuna is their best player. Right. Like, Freddie Freeman's phenomenal. Ronald Acuna is the best player, maybe in baseball outside of Otani. This guy's going to steal 40 bags. No, this guy's going to steal 60 bags this year, 100 RBIs, 40 home. He's going to do, you know, his thing. And and I was mind blown by it. But the Braves are back. They're just insane. You know, they bring up, was it Bryce Miller or Bryce Elder, whatever it is. They bring up these guys, these rookies these pitchers and they're phenomenal i don't know how they do it but i think the braves are the team that's going to take it home yeah i i can't go against the braves i have the braves going back to the world series i think the nl is competitive don't get me wrong i think the nl is competitive i think that there are a lot of great teams in the national league right now none of them touch the braves the braves are the braves they're a special group um they're completely dominant everything you just said and more um yeah. American League. It's I don't know. I don't know. I think that there are too many teams that are playing great. And the Rays, the Rays can fuck off. I don't think the Rays are that good. Um, and they stumbled into the break. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. Three and seven in their last yeah. 10. I don't think the Rays are good. I think they're playing uh, far better than they are. I'll give them credit for that crazy yeah. run that they went on early in the season. But I also think that they blew their load a little bit early in the season, going on that run. I and think I, you could rule out the AL Central. So I think it's between, you know, the top three teams in the AL West and the listen, AL East, honestly. If you want me to pick a team right now out of the American League to go to the World Series, depending on what they do at the deadline and whether they can add a pitcher, like you said, I'm going to go with the Orioles. I think the Orioles have something cooking right now. And I think that they're the kind of team yeah. that can get hot in October. Yeah, I, I like that pick a lot. I think we both came with some uh, surprising but solid picks for that AL, um, AL team to represent. I just I don't think I the, love I love that team. Yeah. What team in the in the American League right now, outside of if New York adds Otani, which they very well could, then they would be my World Series pick. I think that they would go go to the World Series if they add Otani. What team's dominant? Like the Rays, yeah, on paper, I haven't been. You look at the Rays' record, yeah, sure, whatever. If you play them in a playoff series, are you really like that afraid of them? Like, oh, we have no chance. Yeah, against I them? no, yeah. you're not. Actually, I did hear a rumor that apparently Soto is linked to the Rays. I don't now, know that, how real that is. That would if they be make a move, move like that. That would yeah. be something. That would be something. Yeah. And that and Rose Arena is phenomenal. Diaz is amazing. But the one thing uh, that would be the move. The thing about Texas, and I, I'm I'm happy that you gave them their proper due in your pick. This is one of the best hitting teams I've ever seen in person. I went to, I think it was mm-hmm. Game Two of our of the Sox series. Their entire lineup and is like hitting 280 or higher. I, yeah, I I knew that they were good, and I knew that they hit the shit out of the ball. Every time a guy came up, and you look at the jumbotron, it's like batting 290 with 10 home runs. It's like, yes. Jesus Christ, like, where'd you get uh-huh. all this pop from in your lineup? It's insane. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Um. So I'm glad we did this. Uh, a little mid-season check-in. We're going to be much more consistent from here on out. Uh, I had to mm-hmm. shake the dust off. And, uh, you know, we're back, baby. We're back. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time.